And we'll give the, the floor to our next speaker, Kyle Baron from Foursquare. And he's going to tell us about the potential of Geo Parquet and Geo Haro on the web. So looking forward to, to hear this. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yeah. Cool. Uh, how do I share my screen? Which button is that again? You'll get some buttons magically appearing. Oh, it is <laughs> magically appearing. Yeah, you're sharing your screen. Okay, cool. So uh, I decided, or thanks for, for having me. Um, I want to talk a little bit about GeoParquet on the web because I think that Parquet is a really great file format for bringing analytical vector data onto the web. So today I wanted to try something new instead of having slides, trying to do something in an observable notebook to have a little demo at the end of the same notebook. And I posted the, the link in the Gitter as well. So I believe that the web is really the future of geospatial because unlike uh, historically when applications had to be installed um, on a desktop, it's a lot easier to install uh, a web application. You just go to the website um, and it's possible to get really good performance using modern tools like WebAssembly and WebDL. But in order to use a lot of, like for geospatial web apps, you want to support a large amount of data. And pretty much any time on the web, because the browser can't access uh, files outside of the browser sandbox directly, you need to download the data from a server to the front end. But this is almost always going to be the limiting factor for large data because um, the bandwidth speed is much slower than the CPU, than the memory. Um, so anything that reduces how much uh, you're downloading is going to make the web application more responsive. And I think there's really three techniques here that are really valuable. And the first is better compression techniques. That if you can spend a little extra time on the server and a little extra time on the, on the client, packing and unpacking your data, if you're able to save a lot of time by downloading less data, then that's worth the, that extra cost to pack and unpack the data. The second is, is if you just need less data. So that's uh, one way of solving that has been tiling, like vector tiling. But when you vector tile, you essentially take a snapshot of your data. That's a lossy uh, way to compress your data. And it's hard to do analytics across uh, neighboring tiles. Um, it gets a little messy. You're only loading the data in your viewport, so it's harder to uh, do global uh, analytics using your, your data. Um, spatial indexing, however, is a really great way to require less data if you only want data within a certain bounding box. A third way to make the map more responsive is to stream the download so that you can start rendering the data before it's finished downloading so that the user makes it, it seems more responsive to the user. They don't have to wait until the entire, let's say 100 megabyte file has downloaded before you see something. Now, I think Parquet really uh, is a great fit for each of these three points. Um, so Parquet supports not just compressions, but it supports encodings, um, essentially rearranging the data so that it compresses even better. And you see that in most Parquet benchmarks that the uh, Parquet file will be smaller than almost any other file uh, format you can you can test. Um, requiring less data, Parquet is also uh, has the potential for, because Parquet supports partitioning, as you've heard in the last uh, talk. Um, so if we can store the metadata uh, in this way, then uh, the the client doesn't need to download the entire data set. And similarly, because there's Parquet is in a block format, you can stream the download and potentially uh, render the data before all the data has finished downloading. Now, some, some formats recently have done uh, achieved similar, uh, uh, similar features. Um, I think especially flat GeoBuff is a brilliant specification, but we've seen that Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF has really succeeded in the raster world. And I think part of that is that uh, it's been able to build on top of all the existing tools that supported GeoTIFF and TIFF images. And so I think that Parquet has an advantage because 
uh, as we heard from Javier, the entire ecosystem is already built around uh, Parquet. So if we don't have to work upstream uh, against the current to to build all these tools for Parquet, as long as we just have to update them to, to support geospatial data. Um, so I'm really excited about bringing this to the web. Uh, Parquet is a difficult format, so historically JavaScript implementations uh, have been abandoned, but uh, I was able to use WebAssembly to create a JavaScript library to read and write uh, Parquet using the Rust implementation of Parquet. Um, so here, this is a quick demo. Uh, first, a disclaimer that the uh, loading has been optimized. So here, this GeoParquet file is only 13 megabytes compared to an uncompressed 210 megabyte GeoJSON. However, um, I procrastinated till last night, didn't make this until last night. And so it currently unpacks the GeoJSON for rendering. So this is a slow way to render the data, but it at least shows the potential that if you're able to load the data in GeoParquet, you're uh, really working on the performance of loading the data. And then uh, the next step is keeping the data in a binary format on memory and rendering the data faster. So this is a 13 megabyte GeoParquet data set compared to a 210 megabyte GeoJSON uh, that renders uh, here onto uh, a DECGL uh, map. Uh, I think I'm close to time. So I. Uh, I will end my talk there. Yes, you are. Thank you very much uh, for your presentation, uh, Kyle. Uh, so